Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Reagan's daughter just spoke up about what her dad would say about Trump. Shocks all of America. The legendary former president Ronald Reagan might have a mixed opinion about what his daughter just said. Patty Davis is the daughter of Nancy and Ronald Reagan and often spends her time writing as she claims to be an author. One of the most recent things that she wrote was penned for, or simply published on, The Washington Post and it was somewhat shocking what she said. She talked about what her father, Ronald, would probably say about President Donald Trump. The question that remains is this, is she serious? Did she know her father well enough that she would think this is what he would say? Let's dive into her words and see what we can make of them because some people weren't sure that they agreed with the daughter of one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. Perhaps she didn't think this through, or maybe she did. Either way, we have quoted her parts and provided some feedback after. It's okay for you to agree or disagree and everyone's opinion is welcome at the end. This is simply for discussion and debate, nothing more. He had a reverence and a love for America that burned in his eyes when he looked at the flag, that bled into his words when he spoke to the country. Selfishly, I used to feel slighted by that love. I referred sometimes to my sibling rivalry with America. My strident protests against some of my father's policies definitely got his attention, which was what I intended, but they also wounded him, which was not my intention. In his last years of life, when Alzheimer's disease had stolen many things but not love, I was able to sit with him and tell him my regrets. I miss my father in deeply personal ways. I also miss the dignity that he brought to the task of leading this country, the deep respect he had for our democracy, and now, after so much time has passed, I miss how much he loved America. Donald Trump has the same love for America. People often ask me what he would say if he were here now. Sometimes I'm a bit glib in response pointing out that he'd be 107 years old. Other times, I simply say he'd be pretty horrified at where we've come to. But as the June 5th anniversary of his death has drawn near, I've let myself imagine what he would say to the country he loved so much. Mr. Reagan would probably be very excited to see the economy booming, unemployment numbers low, record numbers in the stock market, and the possibility of peace between North and South Korea. It's hard to say what any former president would dislike about those accomplishments. I think he would remind us that America began as a dream in the minds of men who dared to envision a land that was free of tyranny, with a government designed and structured so that no one branch of government could dominate the others. It was a bold and brave dream. But, he would caution, no government is infallible. Our democracy, because it is founded on the authority of we the people, puts the burden of vigilance on all American citizens. With the unemployment rate doing so well, the country is still a land of dreams. Anyone can be anything nowadays. Everyone has the same equal rights and men and women of all races and religions are starting businesses and living the dream they've always wanted. People are living the dream every day. Countries can be splintered from within, he would say. It's a sinister form of destruction that can happen gradually if people don't realize that our constitution will protect us only if the principles of that document are adhered to and defended. He would be appalled and heartbroken at a Congress that refuses to stand up to a president who not only seems ignorant of the Constitution but who also attempts at every turn to dismantle and mock our system of checks and balances. There are people trying to take away the rights at protests, march for our lives. There are also people protesting for rights they already have, women's march. The modern-day American wishes to keep all of their constitutional rights and wishes that men and women of all races and religions live a prosperous life. However, there are some people who persistently protest for things that they can already do, or rights they already have, or to even challenge the Constitution and take rights away. They don't make much sense and they cause the majority of any splintering that might happen. Mr. Reagan would be highly critical of those types of people. He would plead with Americans to recognize that the caustic, destructive language emanating from our current president is sullying the dream that America once was. And in a time of increased tensions in the world, Playing verbal Russian roulette is not leadership, it's madness. He would point to one of the pillars of our freedom, a free press, which sets us apart from dictatorships and countries ruled by despots. He didn't always like the press, no president does, but the idea of relentlessly attacking the media as the enemy would never have occurred to him. And if someone else had done so, he wouldn't have tolerated it. I think he would remind us that America began as a dream in the minds of men who dared to envision a land that was free of tyranny with a government designed and structured so that no one branch of government could dominate the others. It was a bold and brave dream. But, he would caution, no government is infallible. Our democracy, because it is founded on the authority of we the people, puts the burden of vigilance on all American citizens.
With the unemployment rate doing so well, the country is still a land of dreams. Anyone can be anything nowadays. Everyone has the same equal rights and men and women of all races and religions are starting businesses and living the dream they've always wanted. People are living the dream every day. Countries can be splintered from within, he would say. It's a sinister form of destruction that can happen gradually if people don't realize that our constitution will protect us only if the principles of that document are adhered to and defended. He would be appalled and heartbroken at a Congress that refuses to stand up to a president who not only seems ignorant of the Constitution but who also attempts at every turn to dismantle and mock our system of checks and balances. There are people trying to take away the rights at protests, March for Our Lives. There are also people protesting for rights they already have, Women's March. The modern-day American wish is to keep all of their constitutional rights and wishes that men and women of all races and religions live a prosperous life. However, there are some people who persistently protest for things that they can already do, or rights they already have, or to even challenge the Constitution and take rights away. They don't make much sense and they cause the majority of any splintering that might happen. Mr. Reagan would be highly critical of those types of people. He would plead with Americans to recognize that the caustic, destructive language emanating from our current president is sullying the dream that America once was. And in a time of increased tensions in the world, playing verbal Russian roulette is not leadership, it's madness. He would point to one of the pillars of our freedom, a free press, which sets us apart from dictatorships and countries ruled by despots. He didn't always like the press, no president does, but the idea of relentlessly attacking the media as the enemy would never have occurred to him. And if someone else had done so, he wouldn't have tolerated it. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.